بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم مدری صاحب کی طرف شاعری شوری کوئی نہیں ہے ٹھیک ہے پریزنٹیشن ول بی آف فرام دا شاعری اٹ ول بی اسٹریٹ فارورڈ بٹ اٹ واز سچ این ایبزاربنگ پریزنٹیشن بائی پروفیسر اٹ واز ایبزاربنگ پریزنٹیشن بائی پروفیسر مدری آئی آلویز ٹریٹ واچ جہاں بھی مجھے ملے موقع چاہے وہ کیراف ہو یا لاہور آف تیلمہ ہو تو میں مدری صاحب کی پریزنٹیشن آئی ٹرائی ڈونٹ مس with presentation Thank you. Okay, that is always full of science and this art so my topic is just related to the uh, two spectacle freedom I will talk about the the new lens which are going to be launched by the Medican tour and that is the Liberty map uh, I will try to limit my so I have no financial disclosure to <clears throat> Uh, we know that cataract presents a leading cause of the preventable blindness in the world. And as the procedure increases every year, patients' demands are becoming more challenging. This is a problem for us. Whenever we get the patients, the patients demand they are more, the patients are more demanding. They have, we have now more challenges because there was a time when I was working uh, in LRBT. So Professor Munir Sahib was with us. So wo, that was the transition, not transition from extra capsular cataract extraction to phaco emulsification. But there was a time when there was a transition from intracapsular to extra capsular. And the famous saying of Professor Muni was, Anegara Tob Chilani. And then we divide a term six by cow. If a patient is a cow, a farmer, a cow patient, and he can see a cow. So we coined a term that is a six by cow. So he was a heavy, happy patient. But now the era is totally changed and the patients expect excellent visual results, perfect vision, even after the four hours of the surgery. Many of us, we actually usually off the pad after four hours or six hours. And some of us, they don't pad the eye after the surgery. So the patient, they are more demanding. They need a good visual outcome. But with all these different premium IOLs, they are having different qualities as well as their own limitations and described by Professor Madri, dysphotopia and decreased contrast sensitivity. The 2016 ESCRS clinical survey shows that 43% of the cataract procedures are targeted for monovision. Concepts hain, ye teen jo Professor Madri mein bata diye the. One is the monovision, we have the monofocal IULs, and then this, we can even mix and match, that is the blended vision. We can have mix and match of the eye, different types of the IULs. One IUL in the other eye, the other uh, IUL in the other eye. We can even mix and match, we can blend. Then we can have a far vision in one eye, near vision of the other eye, and all these ideas are there. But the ideal IOL should restore the patient's vision without complications or visual compromises at all distances. And that is the emetropia. This line is very controversial. According to the 2016, the latest studies shows that with the use of different IOL, emetropia can be achieved in almost all cases. But the latest studies shows that this is achievable and possible, the 84.6 to be very accurate, that's the 84.6% of the patients, they have this emetropia in these cases. So we have the different types of premium IOLs. That's a multifocal accommodative. They provide the clear vision at near and distal focal points and without additional spectacle corrections. And of course, toric lenses are available for collection of the astigmatisms. Patients which, who are coming to us now, it's a different era. I see my patients who are at a very early age, they come to us, and that's why this procedure has become a refractive procedure nowadays. Particularly in those patients who are hypermetrobe, they need to get rid of the glasses, particularly at the far distance and the near. They have the heavy glasses for the near. So at this age, they want to get rid of the glasses. And of course, this procedure has become rapid and refined procedures. Very senior surgeons are sitting here, yeah, and they have very good surgical hands, and that results due to small incidence, very quick recovery, and great visual outcomes. 
And this is all the pre legs which I described. That's a pre press perfect. This is the lens extraction. But until fairly recently, this is very fair that multifocality meant bifocality actually. So the light energy is primarily directed to near and far focal points, but the third focal point is missing in the bifocal lenses. The multifocality in the true nature is an optical compromise. And the trade off of two or more focal points on the retina that associated with some level of topic phenomena, halos and glares. In bifocal IULs, you have the expense of the intermediate vision. You don't have the intermediate vision in this. So what is the challenge? The challenge is to have a multifocal IUL that should provide continuous visual acuity over all three distances, that is near, intermediate, and far vision, and minimal photopic phenomena with the greatest amount of light reaching the retina for optimal contrast sensitivity. And these are the aims of trifocality. You should enjoy life in all its dimensions. High resolution for all distances. You have a glass independency. Better intermediate vision performance, even in low light conditions. All of us know that when we put the trifocal lens or multifocal lens in the eye, we ask the patient always that use, particularly in the initial days, use the strong lights or bright lights to read. So we have, we should have a lens which work in low light conditions also, and with low complication rate with a better stability and the lower PCO rate. Uh, okay, so what are the different designs of the multifocals? So Professor Madhuri have discussed this, all this, that we have the refractive and dif diffractive lenses, and these are the diffractive lenses. We don't need the refractive now more, and we have different types of these are the bifocal, then we have the trifocal lenses, fine vision, AT laser, ray one, and then quadrifocal with one deactivated that is pan optics. And Professor Madhuri very beautifully described the mechanism of this EDOF provided by the symphony that is the extended depth of focus. And this is actually the today's trifocality that is the liberty with Medicontour EPS. And I will describe what is this lens is. So this is the lens, this is a trifocal lens, and look at these unique properties of this lens, that is the three in one. It's a diaphractive, refractive, and apodized lens. And what are the, these, these two terms have been discussed, and this term I will discuss you. So this lens, this Liberty lens, have two parts. The central three millimeter is apodized diaphractive structures, this is 25%, and 75% is the outer refractive zone. What does this apodization mean? So apodization is actually is a term that is derived from the Greek that is cutting off the feet. This is gradual reduction or blending of the diaphractive step heights. It is a change in the property of the lens or its function from center to periphery in a radial fashion. If you look here, so you can see here, this is the, basically the mechanism of apodization. And this apodization, you can see here, here the distance between these two is 2.2 microns and the height and distance is decreasing towards the periphery. And in the periphery, it is 1.4 micron. So apodization improves image quality by optimizing the light energy delivered to the retina by distributing the appropriate amounts of light to near and distant focal points, and regardless of the lighting situation. So this is the 2.2 micron, and this is 1.5 micron. Yahan se lekar yahan tak, ye jo uske height or width hai, wo kam ho rahi hai. And this phenomena is basically, is called progressive apodization. And that is the theory that called PAD theory, P-A-D. Here. You can see here, the depth and height is decreasing towards the periphery from the center and from 2.2 micron to 1.4 micron in the periphery. And this is actually the progressive apodization diffractive. This is the mechanism of this lens. In addition to this, this, the, this one. So this is a diffractive refractive apodization. You can see here, 
So this is the mechanism that is called the elevated shift technology. And this EPS stands for elevated phase shift. And this elevated phase shift, if you can see here, this is for the distance, and this is the intermediate, and this is the near, uh, this is the intermediate, and this is the near. And you can see here, here there is elevated shift. And this is technology that gives the three, all three distances, all three distances, the vision more accuracy in this lens. And this form a sort of constructive interference. Yahan pe iski constructive interference banegi. Iski wajah se yahan se unho ne ye elevated phase shift diye. Jisko you can see here. Ye progressively decrease kar rahe towards the periphery. Here you can see this is in the center. And but the height of the these refractive rings, they are decreasing at the periphery from the center. But here you can see they have elevated this one and that is the elevated phase shift and that gives the additional feature, unique feature to this lens that gives the good visual outcome at all three distances. So, this is the central one and this is the uh, peripheral one that is 75% of refractive or dead step heights decreases periphery from 2.2 micron to 1.4 micron and that gives two different diffractive orders. It is the zero at the far and one at the near and this is the add to this lens. This is 3.50 plus at lens plane and that equals to 2.70 diopter and 1.35 diopter at the spectacle planes respectively. So, ये मैंने सिर्फ इसलिए डाली है क्योंकि इसको कंपेयर करना बहुत जरूरी था with the previous lens because extended depth of focus. So this is the acrivia. This is tri ed extended depth. यहाँ पर अगर आप देखें तो the mechanism is almost the same. यहाँ पे भी उन्होंने elevate किया हुआ है, ठीक है? Extended depth दी हुई है, but पिछली उस पे चले जाएं here you can see the lines they are almost equal. तो यहाँ पे यहाँ पे ये ज़्यादा करके उन्होंने कंप्रोमाइज़ किया हुआ है फॉर द इंटरमीडिएट एंड डिस्टेंट विज़न। सो दिस इज़ द डिफरेंस एंड दिस इज़ द यूनिक प्रॉपर्टी इन दिस लेंस कि उन्होंने फार और नियर डिस्टेंसेस जो हैं दे ऑलमोस्ट ऑलमोस्ट इक्वल बट विद अ वेरी गुड नियर विज़न। द अदर डिफरेंस ये लिबर्टी और उसके बाद रिफ्रैक्टिव रिंग्स को कम कर दिया जो प्रोफेसर मदरी ने बताया था दे हैव द गुड रिफ्रैक्टिव रिजल्ट्स कि जितने कम हो जाएंगे उतने ही लाइट की जो डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन है वो ज्यादा बेहतर हो जाएगी बट रे वन में इसी तरह दीज आर द ये फिर वो साइज है दिस इज द पीपल डिपेंडेंसी एंड पीपल इनडिपेंडेंसी व्हिच डॉक्टर मदरी हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्क्राइब सो दिस इज द डिफ्रैक्टिव जोन दिस इज द पीपल डिपेंडेंट एंड पीपल नॉट इनडिपेंडेंट लेंसेस So, still, we are going to implant this lens. Uh, maybe in this week, I have uh, tomorrow. I'm going to implant one lens in one of my patient. So then we will see the data which we received previously, and this is a very high success rate. There's 88 percent of the eyes have plus minus 0.5 diopter in between, and that's a very high success rate for the visual acuity. <clears throat> So this is to be summarized that each diffractive ring results in light scattering. Then there is loss of light energy, which leads to loss of contrast sensitivity and high indices, incidence of halos and glare. There is one slide. This is a very important slide, which actually compares all the available lenses which we have in our country or which we are using all these lenses. And this is a comparative. This slide is, you can see here, this is the Liberty, Ray-1 trifocal, AT Lisa, fine vision, that is Physiol, and Panoptics Alcon. The technology you, uh, we have discussed, this is a diffractive, refractive, trifocal, epidized. This is diffractive, refractive, trifocal, AT Lisa, and then diffractive, trifocal, epidized, and epidized. This is the Panoptics Alcon. Steps we have discussed, we have three steps in this Liberty, trifocal, 16 in the Ray-1, 21 to 21 in the AT Lisa Zeiss, 
and 15 in the pan optics. This is very important diffractive orders. This is the first diffractive order. We have the first one in, and then this acts on the second one, second one, second one, or ye quadrofocal jo hai, is ke upar three hai diffractive orders, or ek unhone deactivate kiya hai, pan optics walhone, alcon walhone. Surface, ye hum discuss kar chuke hai, the three millimeter, 4.5, 4.5, and this is 4.5 in the pan optics. Light loss, this is very important. This is 11% light loss, but the energy distribution you can see here for the distance, intermediate, and near is ye jo energy distribution hai yaha pe 53% or near ke liye 33%. Ye basically is lens ko is ke liye thoda sa elevate karti baki ki nisbat. You can see here they have compromised the energy distribution for the far and for the, the, for the near, or yaha pe unho ne bada ke ye. The far or near ko unhone compromise kar diya, but you can see here, there here it is 53% for the far, near is 33, but yaha pe unhone jo kaam kiya, wo inter, wo elevated phase shift de di, jiske wajah se ye jo effect wo nahi ho ra. And then we have the additions, all of us know what are the different additions, uh, yaha pe kuk hum usko use kar rahe hai, toricity is available in almost all of these lenses, reading distance you can see here, this is very important, abrasion. Okay, here is neutral and now uh, Professor Madri, he just discussed, told you the abrasion that is the spherical abrasion and chromatic abrasion and this is due to this Abbe number. This Abbe number is very important. Why? This Abbe number hai, this is one of the highest that is the 58 in Liberty Lens and this chromatic abrasion is distortion in optical system formed by different wavelengths of light to have different focal points. Higher the Abbe number, the lower the chromatic abrasion. You can see here, this is a lens with high Abbe number, and this is a lens with low Abbe number. So this is very important that you should choose a lens which have got a high Abbe number, and then we have the material, only one lens available, that is the hydrophobic acrylic, that is available, that is the pan optics, Otherwise, it may be all of these lenses, they are hydrophilic acrylic. One or more feature is that is, uh, is the stability. You can see here, the, this design have got the large contact angle of 180 degree balanced haptic force. And here is the rotational stability hai, that is very, very much stable as compared to the other competitor. Okay. So, this is a feature. Hai. The other feature is that is it has got a very low PCO rate, rate because this has got a 360 square edge technology. You can see here. So, this prevents the PCO and this is very important. You, do, you don't need to have the capsulotomy later on. To summarize this lens, this has got a trifocal performance with excellent far, near and intermediate vision refractive predictability and long-term stability. Ye hum dekhenge. Okay? This will we see after when we put or implant these lenses. Ek saal ke baad, jab hum yahan pe bethenge, to phir uske results hum batayenge, mein pusa, ke this is the uh, long refractive predictability and long stability. Then it has got literature shows the outstanding contrast sensitivity. The patients have excellent reading speed complete spectacle in the independence, inshallah, and minimum reports of dysphotopsia, high patient satisfaction we need, and the premium material design optic got the safety record, PCO protection, retina, and the platform also have the toric options in these lenses. These are the few references, and thank you very much for uh, patience and listening to me. So now we can have you know, some question answers. Madhuri sir, jawab do. Jawab do. Jawab do.